Hello everybody and welcome to Largely Mediocre Gamers. This is Lumpa, here to bring you a change to our regularly scheduled programming. Um, now I know I put up on the blog that I was gonna... Um, I put up a schedule on the blog basically and it said it's gonna be Dark Souls on Monday, Cannonball on Wednesdays and Fridays are gonna be Awesome Noughts. But we have now run into some technical issues with Awesome Noughts. Um, whenever I try to record it it gives me lag to the point of being unplayable. I think they might have done something in a recent patch that has affected this, I'm not entirely sure. But, them's the apples, or whatever the phrase is. So to that end, I thought I'd, I'd determined to bring you something, even if it isn't awesome noughts, which I'm sure everyone loved. <laughs> Got so many views. So, to that end, I'm gonna show you some Kerbal Space Program. This is a game I really, really am loving. And in fact what I'm going to do is start a new game in Kerbal Space Program. Let's call it... Um, the Largely Mediocre Space... I'll play a name. Okay, let's just go with Largely Mediocre Lumber. Yeah. They don't have that career mode made yet, so sandbox and let's pick a flag. What's what's quite mediocre? What sort of suits us? Something called blobs. Blob seems pretty mediocre. Let's go with that. So, seen as awesome noughts is now dead in the water, uh, as with dust before it, we're going to start a new series, and it's going to be Kerbal Space Program. And the idea is that I'm going to show you weird gimmicky stuff. So not your sort of standard Kerbal, you know, make a rocket, go to the moon, go to orbit. You don't come to Largely Mediocre Gamings to learn anything. That's not what we're here for. No, you come to us to see people failing badly. And to that end, I'm going to show you crazy rocket... Rocket? Rocket weirdness. So... Let's pop into the vehicle assembly building. So the point of this game, for those of you who are here to learn something, both of you, raise your hands, is to build rockets and fly them to different places wherever you want. There are no missions, there is no sort of set goal for you, it's all about sort of doing what you want to do and, you know, sort of finding for yourself how you want to go about things. So, as much as I said I was going to do gimmicky stuff, I am first of all going to get us into orbit. So the first thing you need to pick is a command pod. This is where your little astronauts are going to go, your little kerbals, hence the name of the game. These guys walking around here. You pick out your command pod, and from there you're building around that. That's like your centerpiece for everything else. So. Having picked out our command pod so that we can fit all our kerbals in, next thing to do is to get some fuel so that we can launch ourselves up into space. I'm going to pick quite a big one to start off with. I don't want to get us into space on the first try. How embarrassing would it be if I didn't after playing this game for like 100 hours or something truly pathetic. So we want that. We're going to take us into space. We're going to have uh, an engine. So there's a lot of different engines to pick from, uh, and they all have different sort of efficiencies, different powers. For now we're going to go for the biggest one, because that will help get us out of the atmosphere. We're going to stick some... If I go into structural, there's lots of different bots here. I should probably explain everything really, a bit more slowly, but whatever. So, we've got our fuel, we've got our engine, we've got our control pod. I think we're going to need a bit more power than that to get us into orbit. So if I take that, that little fuel section away for a moment. I'm going to add another stage. Now to do that I'm going to stick in another fuel tank as so and another engine but this time I'm going to pick an engine that I think should do a bit better out in the atmosphere. It needs to be a bit more efficient even though it might be a bit less powerful. So for that I want this... Hmm. Let's go for the skipper. The skipper should be fine. Now, to the bottom of that, because we want that to be a separate stage, we don't want it just burning straight into our fuel engine like this, that'd be silly. We want something to detach it before we set it off. So, for that I want a decoupler, just like you see in the rocket launches in real life, if you've ever watched one. If you haven't, go find one on YouTube, they're really cool. 
Um, so now I can fire off this big engine. That should take us up high, quite high. Then when, once all this fuel is empty in this tank, separate it, fire this engine and use all this fuel to get us into an orbit. And in case we need a bit more um, oomph to get us up out of the atmosphere, if that makes sense, I'm going to add some boosters. Now before I do that, I need to put on some radial decouplers. So instead of having it in a stack, I can attach them to the side. And for that, I'm going to use some of these. I want to have as many as possible, so I'm going to go into symmetry mode down here and select, let's say, 8, see if 8 will fit nicely. Hmm. If we get a bigger decoupler, maybe we can fit 8 on. So let's get 8 decouplers, go back to our propulsion, and we'll get these solid rocket boosters on. Line them up nice and carefully, and there we go. So, you might have noticed over on the right hand side here, I've got these orange bars and they're filling up with different icons. And that basically controls the order that everything's going to fire in. So, first of all, I want my boosters to fire. Then, this engine I want to fire at the same time, which makes your rocket a bit more efficient. Then I want my boosters to eject when they're all spent and useless. We're also then going to eject afterwards our big engine, and then we're going to fire the little engine. That's what these little symbols all mean. So boosters, big engine, eject the side, eject the middle, and then a big one. Now of course, if we get into orbit, we might also want to come down again, and I think I probably will. And in case we don't as well, we want to be able to save our nice little astronauts, our nice little crew. And for that, we're going to need some parachutes. So if I go into utility, I can pick out a parachute, stick it on the top, like so nice and helpful. That will now be the last thing to pop off and it should help save our Kerbals. In fact, in case they do crash, I want another decoupler really so that I can separate them off in case anything goes badly and then pop the parachute. So, this is our first rocket. Isn't it great? And we're going to name it Good Ship Mediocrity. There's a nice name. Good Ship Mediocrity. And he's gonna go into orbit, hopefully. That's the plan. Probably won't work. I'm not very good at the game. Now, before we launch it, one last little detail. I'm going to stick some of these on. These will hold everything in place before we launch which is super helpful because then it won't fall over before we even get it off the ground. Which, yes, does happen a lot to me. Might add a few more. No, they're sort of phasing through. No, let's not do that. Yeah, we'll leave them. Okay, so this is all we want for now. Nice and simple, nothing too complicated going on here. I don't think I've forgotten everything. I hope I haven't forgotten anything too important. Let's save it and launch do, 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 and hope that fraps doesn't absolutely kill my fps like it did for some knots here we go mm, we seem to be okay so this is our ship on the launch pad ready to take off First thing I want to do is move up the throttle. Now that's shift on my keyboard, you'll have your own controls. But shift up. I also want to engage the sort of autopilot system they have that will keep everything steady, which I do by pressing T, and I can see that that's activated over here. My Kerbal's are all fine up here. One last thing is I want my stability support things to go off at the same time as my engines, so I'll move them up in my orange tab on the left. And without further ado, press spacebar to fire everything off and see how it goes. There we go, we're nice and steady. We are rolling a little bit. The engine is maybe going to overheat. I'm going to turn that down because it looks a little bit higher. So it doesn't overheat up. Back off the throttle. There we go, that's fine.
them. Those will fall back down to earth, or curbing, as it should really be called. I want to control our rolling a bit. I'm going to get ready to turn to make the most use of our fuel. This is about, we're about to run out of fuel in this stage. So we're going to decouple that, throttle down a bit, and start burning away. And then I'm going to power it up some more. We're not as far out of the atmosphere as I might have liked. We might not make it to orbit as much fuel as we do have. I'm going to start our turn now. This is going to be a tricky one to do if I'm not efficient about it. We're going to go all the way to 45 degrees, and then we're going to stop. Okay, so we're going to turn now to try and start an orbit rather than just going straight up. Because if you go straight up, you're never going to get anywhere. This is the map view, so we can see the planets. We can zoom out and see the different moons, but for now, we're just trying to get into orbit, so I'll stay focused on the planet. And our first goal is going to be just to get out of the atmosphere, which we should quite easily do. And hopefully have enough lift to make a nice orbit all the way around the planet. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Best of a plan of uh, mice and kerbals. And okay, I think I'm going to drop the photo now, which is X, is it? Because we're about to be out of the atmosphere. Now, this little point here called the apoapsis is the highest point in our orbit. And at the moment, it's not really good enough because our orbit is just going to crash us straight into the sea over here somewhere. So what we want to do is get to this point and start burning straight forward. And because of how orbital mechanics works, yeah, fun I know, you came to a gaming channel to hear about orbital mechanics I'm sure, going forward at this point will push out the orbit and hopefully make it nice and circular around the planet. So that is one minute away. Before we get there I'm going to point our ship straight forward using this little ball at the bottom. As you can see, this represents the 90 degrees of sort of horizon. So I want to get around there and then stop and put our autopilot back on. This yellow point represents the direction we're currently going. So at the moment we're still sort of traveling slightly up. When it reaches completely straight itself, we're going to start boosting forward. And I think we're gonna start doing that quite soon because we're nearly there and we might take quite a while to get us around the planet. So, let's start when we get to about 20 seconds. Do, 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 do. I'm not really paying attention. Yeah, we want to start now. Let's throttle up. And as you can see, we're going to start going forward. Now if I go into the map view I can see how well we are in achieving orbit. There we go, we're doing pretty fast. We might not have enough fuel to make this. Oh, this is going to be a close one. This is going to be very close. I normally build a lot of redundancy into my rockets and because I wanted to do this quickly I didn't. We might not make it all the way into orbit. Oh, this is going to be tight. We'll see. Oh, we should. We might be fine. We might be fine. I can't really tell yet. We're using 17 fuel per second. We've got 700 left. And there we go. Okay, let's drop the photo now. We've easily made it into orbit. No worries. No worries at all. So, as you can see, we've got this nice orbit around Kerbin. I might return to my ship, and oh, look at that, we can see the moon. We can see Kerbal, the sun over here. And we can get this nice view of the planet beneath us. Isn't that gorgeous? This is a beautiful game. While I'm here, let's show you what we can do with our Kerbals inside the ship. Now, I can first of all pop in and actually look from their view. I can either press C or click here for IVA in vehicle activity. And now we can look around from a Kerbal's eye view and see as they see. 
you can see sort of the same instruments that you get on your HUD over here we can see the planet, we can see the stars, you can get really nice views like this I can switch between them if I like with V again see who's on different seats, this guy at the back the other one you can do now that we're safely out of the atmosphere, this isn't so risky is to take them out of the vehicle by pressing this button here and let's start with my favourite, Bill so you can now see he's grabbed onto the side of the ship we can move down this little ladder oh, just as the music kicks in, isn't it brilliant? so I'm going to press space to let go and he's going to float away from the ship now obviously it's far from ideal for that to happen unless you have some way of getting back so if I press R let's turn on the jetpack and we can start floating around our ship and having a look we can put his headlights on on his little suit <laughs> this is kind of disconcerting I don't normally do EVA is so close to the planet and there's a sort of sense of relative movement because you can still see the sort of land beneath you and it is really really freaky <laughs> oh god that's really weird so I can look around I can check out our ship this at the moment this doesn't have much purpose I'm just doing this to mess around but later on when we're building gigantic space stations and building rockets out in orbit and doing all sorts of cool stuff this will be really helpful as we can move Kerbals around. For now though let's go back to the cockpit and get back on before I lose control or run out of fuel or something terrible happens. This is really freaky. It feels like it's moving too fast. <laughs> okay. So let's line him up, get nice and close, I'm going to turn off the jetpack and then just gently grab on as we get near, I've overshot it, oh dear, tumbling, tumbling, let's put the jetpack on, back on to get under control, oh dear, okay, okay, let's try this again, let's slow down, Zoom in a bit so I can get more, get a better idea of what I'm doing here. This looks okay, it looks like we're headed towards it. Uh, let's go slightly forward. Oh, gentle, 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 don't die, no one die, please, that would be far from ideal. And let's grab on, grab on, grab on, oh god, it's really hard to see perspective. Grab, there we go, there we go, we've grabbed on, and now we can safely board before I screw up any further. <laughs> wow, that was harder than it should have been. Okay. <laughs> Okie dokes. So, this is the lowest point in our orbit, this is the highest one. What we now want to do is wait till we get back to the highest point and we can slow ourselves down and crash back into the planet and try and get our Kerbals home safely. That would be ideal. I'm going to speed up time to do that, which is quite a ha handy little feature because otherwise, you know, some of these trips would take years of real time when we're going like later on to these distant planets they take absolutely forever so they've handily put in a little time warp feature nice and useful and then we're going to wait until we're quite close to here and now as you can see I'm in the dark which is far from ideal but we'll make this work now you'll notice this little yellow icon on our nav ball it's slightly different it's got a cross in the middle that means that's the opposite direction to the way we are currently going which is good for me I want to point in that direction and put my thrusters on and that will slow us down because we're sort of going towards the opposite direction if that makes sense I'm not explaining it very well then hopefully we can crash nicely into the planet use our parachutes to slow ourselves down and we'll bring our kerbals home safely so let's line it up and get ready to burn at about 10 seconds 
There we go. There we go. And we're now on a collision course with the planet. We'll probably land. We'll land somewhere on this landmass, it says, but the atmosphere will slow us down, so we'll actually land somewhere in this ocean area here. Hopefully. I'm going to speed time again until that happens. Let's try and not waste your time on these simple little things that you can see on anybody else's Kerbal videos. Speaking of which, there are really, really good people doing um, Kerbal Space Program stuff at the moment. Um, my personal favourite is Kurt J. Mac. He does some really funny ones. Um, we've got Yog uh, Duncan from the Yogscast is doing a Kerbal Space Program series. Go and check them out. Don't don't waste time on us like lamers. We're not as good as them. Go and watch Duncan. He's good. So we're now back in the atmosphere. I will come out of our map view because we're going to get some cool effects happening sooner or later, and you'll see lovely re-entry burning as we hit the atmosphere and it looks really cool. I mean this is far from the like graphically most well rendered game. I mean you know look at these mountains and stuff they're sort of big polygons in the background but it's the these sort of big views you get you see all this sort of cool stuff you go to different planets that, that's what makes this game really beautiful I think. So feel free to disagree <laughs> You're probably wondering what I'm going on about. Um, let me speed up time a little, just for the sake of <coughs> us not being here absolutely forever. What I should really do as well now that we're going to crash is drop that fuel stage. I probably should have been behind it when I did, because now it might collide with us. Oh god, it's going to collide. Careful. Oh dear. Oh no. No, we're fine. We're slowing down more. It's heavier, so it gets slowed down more more difficultly. <laughs> it doesn't get slowed down as much. Here we go. So the air is now sort of pushing back against us. We've got this cool air braking effect as we start to burn through the atmosphere. I'm going to keep us a bit steady here with the autopilot, just tapping it on and on, off and on. This should do, we'll slow down quite a lot here, you can see that's going to sail right ahead of us. It's now saying that we're going to, oh the atmosphere slows down more than I thought, we're going to land somewhere on these sort of mountainy hilly areas. Which could be bad, our parachutes won't have as long to slow us down, these are the sort of things you have to take into account sometimes. I'd rather have landed in the sea where it's more safe. And I uh, should probably put out our parachute soon. If you do it when you're going too fast, it'll break, is the trade-off that you have to make. So let's wait until we slow down a bit more from the atmosphere before we pop our parachute. Yeah, okay, let's put that out now. It'll slow us down quite a lot. Oh dear. Are you going to be fine? We'll be fine. We're going to be fine, guys. Don't worry. Why are you even getting concerned? I'm not. I'm cool as a cucumber up in here. <laughs> the Kerbal's on. Oh my god, he looks terrified. That's brilliant. Bob's going mental. Jeb Jebediah loves it. Jeb Kerman. Legend. But here we go, getting ready to land. Any time now. Any time you want. Okay, we're getting a bit of FPS lag. <laughs> I don't know why, this is hardly the difficult bit to render. Maybe it's because we're approaching the surface. So I'm to suddenly start rendering things. I might have to take down surface detail a little. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll take off some of the surface details. They don't make a, they don't make a huge difference, but there's no need to be on maximum settings for this game. To be honest, it's not like it's a Renaissance piece. 
That sound we just heard is the fuel crashing into the planet, I believe. And our parachute's deployed, there we go. So now we're going to fall nice and slowly. I'm just going to accelerate time a bit to get us to the ground a bit quicker. We are still several hundred meters up in the atmosphere. We're not going to hit for a while. Sorry about this lag, that's kind of irritating. We're having such a good trip for lag. Let's set ourselves down before we hit the ground. And... Any moment now. Boom. And we've landed. And the FPS is sorting itself out. So there you go, that is our first rocket in Kerbal Space Program. Up and orbited and down again. First try. Woo! Let's take out someone to celebrate. Who should get the honour? Let's take out Jebediah to celebrate. Yay, we're down on the planet. Let's zoom in. And he can plant a flag in front of our lovely ship here. So yeah, landing place, police, landing place of the crew of the good ship Mediocrity. Hmm, I like it. Uh, let's take Jeb back on board. He can celebrate a bit. And up we go. I think I'll call this first episode there. We've had a nice success. Our first, um, first real challenge. This has been Largely Mediocre Gaming, you've been watching Kerbal Space Program, I've been Limper, you've all been fantastic. So I'll see you all on Monday ladies and gentlemen with some more Dark Souls and by god I will get into a good schedule of uploading, I swear to you. Goodbye, bye everyone, bye bye.